Good morning, YouTube. So it's been three weeks. I know it's only been like a day or two for you guys, but it's been three weeks because I went on vacation. And we're back at the 348. All this stuff, if you guys didn't know, was sent to us by Rakambi. So Rakambi totally hooked him up and they've been sponsoring all this. So you guys need to go check out Rakambi, rakambiamerica.com and use the code NGS10. You get 10% off, it's good stuff. They've been pretty badass. We're gonna start putting back together the 348. So we got all torn apart. Wasn't too bad taking apart. Now comes the harder part. It's gonna suck, but it's gonna be good. I hope you guys enjoy this. Huh? It wasn't a total loss of three weeks, so we got it nice and polished yes. up everywhere. So. Yeah, so during my three week absence, Tim was busy. And as you can see, I don't know if you remember, but the motor was much less clean. There was a bunch of plastic crap that had like baked onto the, the headers right there. Everything was covered in grease. <laughs> Grease and dirt and grime, and now it's nice and beautiful and clean. I mean, look at this. Looks amazing. And we have all the parts. Oh, and check this out. He got the valve covers totally repainted. Look how beautiful those look. That's amazing. Those look so, those look brand new. All, all right. right, what do we got first? Um, I guess I gotta run to the parts store because part of putting that front cover back on is the uh, tensioner. Don't. So I gotta okay. lock tight that, so. We'll run and do that real quick. All right, well, nothing like starting off a project by running as a parts store. Right. All right, so we're going to start rebuilding with the front. Apparently, there's a bearing that goes right in there. Oh, really? This one's important? Yeah, because um, some of these, um, the one here on the main drive gear, Yeah. Uh, the early models were roller bearings, and then they, Ferrari replaced it with a roller bearing of substandard quality. So. Ooh. Hill Engineering makes really good ones. Oh, good. So we have a Hill Engineering part? Yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, So what is this part? Let me see. Uh, this isn't it. I have to find it. Oh, okay. Let's find the right part. So this is the bearing that goes in that cup. What part number is this? It is. It's a superseded part number, and that's the new part number there. Okay. 171177. But this bearing is the one that's the major catch. This was originally an SKF bearing. Ferrari sold their rights for parts production for the older cars. SKF bearing got replaced with a no-name, who knows what bearing. <laughs> Within a couple hours of running the engine, they already puked the grease out the front. <laughs> so fortunately, Hill Engineering took the time to work with NTN to reproduce the bearing in a even higher specification. So this is the one that causes a lot of problems that will allow the, the timing belt drive pulley to walk around. Where does that one go? That goes on this the outside. Goes of oh, on the here. outside of the cover. Yep. Okay, so this one's so, on the inside. So this one's back here and then Yep, and that one's on the outside. Yep. Okay, so there's it's basically holding the shaft front and back. Yep. Got it. Got it. So, ah, so you that got a snap already. ring inside and then you've got this conical spacer spring loaded washer and you've got the O ring here. Because you know the engine is back here so you got oil moving around mm -hmm. so uh to keep oil from going through the bearing out the front of the cover we press it into an o-ring and you just use this uh, conical spacer between two circlips to help keep tension okay. on the bearing so that way it can't walk in the housing you know normally you would have a real positive seat real tight press yeah. but the way this part's made, you just have circlips. So. so here is a typical bearing grease seal. Its purpose is to keep the grease that's in the ball bearing, inside in. the ball bearing. That's its only real purpose. It's not designed to fight against engine oil or anything else. You know, and it helps keep dust and debris from getting in. But when you flip the uh, bearing over, it's probably not as obvious to you guys, but to me, this is a very obvious, very typical radial lip seal like your front crankshaft seal or the seals we put in for the camshafts, which is designed specifically for keeping oil on the back side of the seal. You know, normally, like here and here, when you're looking at those seals, you know, it's a flat face. Here you can see we're looking at the back side of it because the engine oil is gonna come up to the bearing this way. So it's very important to make sure that this bearing is installed in the correct direction. So so that well way, side with correct. the divot, flat side grease. Correct. Interesting. Yeah. If you put it this way, you're allowing the opportunity for the engine oil to come through the grease seal, <laughs> wipe out the grease, and then come out the front of the bearing and 
you know, yeah. cause uh, so cause you have a mess and a nice bearing failure at the same time. Yeah. We're gonna put the two bearings in the shaft that the bearings press onto into the freezer for a couple hours or so, and let them chill. So they uh, all kind of compress a little. Yeah, yeah, they'll uh, contract hopefully just enough so that way uh, we put a little bit of heat onto the front cover and they should slip fit together instead of having so that These are all press fit bearings? Yeah, Ooh. yeah. All, all bearings have, uh, in what we're doing here, like, you know, these roller bearings, they all have a press fit both on the outside and on the inside by half a thou, thou, thou and a half of an mm. inch. You can just beat them together on the on the bench, but it's a pretty unpleasant process. So <laughs> if you can use a little bit of a freezer and a little bit of temperature to uh, change the sizing of the components, they slip together real nicely. And there's nothing that feels like a, a, a nicely um, sized bearing to just drop on a shaft. <laughs> ah, the heat transfers between the two parts so quickly, the moment this thing touches, the temperatures between the two parts have equalized enough that it's immediately locked in the place. There is no, oh shoot, I want to pull it back off. Oh, it just goes in, that's it? It's instantly on there and now you'll have to, you know, use tools to pull it apart. So that's the front crank seal, part number 133628, and it goes right in there. That was hard. Dude, I'm qualified to do that. <laughs> I don't know, Tim. I know. I That's mean, stretching it a bit. These are expert fingers here. <laughs> <laughs> Just got some gray RTV. Gray RTV. Yeah. So the, the rubber seals are designed to be soft enough and, and bond. The way I was taught, and I still like to use it, is I'll put just a tiny coat of the gray sealant, and that A, helps lubricate the seal when you push it in so you don't scar it up, yeah. and it will help take up any additional inconsistencies and make sure it stays bonded in that uh, front cover, nice. reducing any likelihood of leaks. Just to me, this whole thing. process is all about managing the probability of leaks as much as possible. Make it last for another five years before it leaks again. I'd say, yeah, absolutely. My hope is that in five years you look at it and wonder to yourself if it's really worth doing another engine out service or not because it's not leaking and it's running good. <laughs> You're doing it just because, you know, that's the thing to do and not because the engine has this problem, that problem, right, another right, right. problem. Like right now, you know, we're curing 20 some odd years worth of deferred maintenance. Yeah. Hopefully in another five and 10 years, it's like, well. We shouldn't have to do quite this degree of an no. engine out. Yeah, next time should just be belts, belts. and seals. Yeah, belts and yep. seals, no oil pan. Nope. Very basic service next time. Yeah, good technique. There is a such thing as too much, but the nice thing is in this application is the way we're going to apply it. It's going to push all the too much up to the face and then we can wipe it off. So okay. it's nice. not that big of a deal. Squish. Damn. That required more force than I expected. Wow. There you go. Yeah, I really saw it move at the end there. <laughs> now, there's a nice silicone colored mess all over the front of it, so we'll just take a little brake clean on a rag and wipe it off. Cool. It's a whole unit? Yeah. It already has the shaft and everything? Yeah. Ah, bitching. Yeah. Well, you can see it's a totally different design. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot sturdier so, right through here. The way Hill has done them, yes. Yeah, they've made a completely different casing to fit again an NTN bearing as opposed to a you know a factory yeah, look original how much SKF. The bearing is yeah, that thing's yeah. The bearing, you can see the bearing is way out on the outside. Yep, much heavier duty bearing. Yeah. Wow. And then this whole cast piece back here looks yeah, like look it's a machine now. That's yep. way better. Yep. Wow, that's impressive. So this is a hill part. Yes. Yep. What was the part number? Came as the both tensioners came together. PT3. PT it's part of the. Uh, oh, it's part of the kit. Yep. Same with the other tensioner bearing. Damn, those are beefy. <laughs> yeah, they're they're gonna last. Just the size of the bearing. The bearing was the size of the the, the inner race. Yeah, the inner race on this one's here. Yeah, the, and the, the outer the, race is as big as the inner race yeah. on that one. <laughs> yeah. So take way more of a beating. It's the manifold for all the coolant sensors and everything. Yep. And it was severely corroded around all of the fittings. We're replacing those. Temperature sensors basically yes. replacing these. This ones. is just an outlet pipe here. 106 Water Union. 241. 
Oh, oh the old ones yeah. beat the hell. <laughs> oh my god. Temperature, Temperature sensors. sensors. One, two, five, seven, six, nine. Wow, that thing is nasty. We put heat on this to make sure it came out without breaking off in the manifold, so it's a little extra oh, okay. cooked. Yeah. A little extra done yeah. up. Yep. Yeah. So that's the small one on this side. And the big one on that side is 104.628. And again, whew. <laughs> a little collateral damage. Yeah. Check this He's, out. Oh, yeah, well, that's not supposed to happen. This is the actual sensing element here, whereas this is just your mounting case. Yeah. It goes into the water jacket. Hmm. But the way we melted it, we we're able to just pull the actual sensing element right out, which it's just kind of entertaining to look at. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Throwing there a little go. RTV on the threads. Now, are these things that should be replaced on like a, a normal major, or are these things that you could probably let go for like uh, every two or three majors? These parts here are original parts that are 25 years old, so they'll probably be fine for another 20 some odd years. Okay. That is a stainless instead of steel fitting, so you may never need to oh, replace that again. That one could be good again. forever, yeah. Yeah, Tim had mentioned having some cooling temperature, uh, reading concerns, and high idle and some things like that. And these uh, temperature sensors not looking real good. It seemed uh, wise to go ahead and replace them. You know, we didn't do any pre-testing before, so I don't know for certain how good or bad the sensors were. Right. But we're here, and they didn't look good. Might so, as well. yeah. Yeah, and this is like negligible cost given the total. Yeah, it is. And this is the true nature of preventative maintenance. Even if these sensors are good, they're 25 years old, they're going to fail sooner than later. Yeah. They're closer to the end of their lifespan than the beginning. To me, yeah, the Do engine's it. here, it's easy access. Do it now so that way in six months you don't have a sensor failure on a motor you just had out of the car. Sure. I had that happen to me once many years ago on a 355. They're notorious for having failures with the fan switch and the right hand radiator. <laughs> and I uh, did an engine out service for this customer and you know did very basic service like many people wish for. And the gentleman picked up the car, drove straight to Manhattan and had the fan switch fail while he was stuck in traffic in Manhattan oh. and couldn't get out of the way, couldn't do anything. Sure. And he ended up roasting both of the cylinder head gaskets oh. quite badly. So three weeks later, I had the car back and the motor was out to replace the head gaskets oh. and a radiator fan switch. So to me, that's one of those yeah. learning for, moments. For a $10 part or whatever. Even a $100 go. part. Yeah, it does go here, right? Yeah. It's got a little crush washer on it. All right. Grease it up. Lunch, Lady Doris. Have you got any grease? Yes. Yes, we do. Then grease me up, woman! Okie dokie. <laughs> and then stick it in. <laughs> and like many other important things in life, it's easy to figure out which hole each one of those belongs in because they technically only fit in one hole properly. Gaskets for the water housing. Ooh, spiffy. This is another one of those things where I was taught a very particular way to do silicone on gaskets. Okay. People tend to overuse silicone. And as I was taught, whatever squishes out, squishes in. Oh, yeah. You just put this right here? Nope, not yet. So that one's got a little bit too much on it. See, so I really, <clears throat> I don't like to just smear it and slam it on there taken tack 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 that way it has a very nice even yeah. coat I also don't like to apply silicone with bare hands because you have oils <laughs> dirts whatever on your hands and that can be a contaminant for the silicone so I prefer to use a nitrile glove so that way a I don't get it all over myself and everything I'm working on and B I make sure that the silicone stays uncontaminated It's got three pieces. Yeah, an O-ring, a nut, and a washer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those gaskets are part number 132981. Standard torque for a 8 millimeter stud with thread pitch 1.25 millimeters, 18 to 22 foot pounds. With a paper gasket like this, I would just do it at 18 foot pounds. If you over torque it, you can Smash split. It. Yeah, exactly. 
No smash in this case. No. Smash is bad. Yeah, smash is bad. Smash is not good. All right, so we're doing 18 foot pounds. Okay. It's important to get a good, accurate torque. One sweeping motion. Yeah, I, I was just kind of storing them all up. You're close Before enough, you got enough sweep. Okay. Yeah, I hadn't come close to set them yet. There you go. Nice. Cool. So throwing a little bit of oil in there before throwing the bearing in. Yeah, and I'm gonna try to reel gently because we don't want to cook our new seal or the O-ring in here. So ah, I'm gonna gotcha. try reel gently to just put a little bit of heat on it. Got a frozen bearing. We want to chuck this up in the uh, vise here. So let's use it as a press. press. Ready? Yep. It's off a little bit. Oh, that matters. Hold on. Ease off. Whoa. Careful top. And then... Okay. Go. Oh yeah. Keep going. Yep. It's pretty tight. No. 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 Yep. Is it angled? Yeah. All right, easy, easy. Let off. Okay, go ahead. All the way. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Should feel it. See, uh, yep. Keep going. Okay, stop. Yep. Sweet. Yes. Nice. Uh, oh, not what? so nice. Oh, what happened? Took the out the o ring. Oh shit. Yeah. Oh, I pinched it. Yep. It took out the o ring. Poor little o ring. Gave its life trying. Parts run in the jag. <laughs> Alright, we have to run to Ferrari of Austin to go get a new o ring. Thankfully, they have it. Round two. Round two for the bearing. This time, ooh. Oh, I think it's right on the O-ring already. Check the other side before you pinch. No, there's the lip there for the... Uh, oh yeah, you're right, you're right. Got a little bit more to go. I'm getting overly cautious now. Dude, that dropped in there nicely though, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that drove it home. Oh, right on it. Right on it? Sweet. Oh, yeah. Don't be a little bitch. Far side looks like it's trying to come out. Yeah, that one corner looked like it. Don't be a little bitch. <laughs> Ooh, that was oh. really good. We have success. Woo! Jackpot! Sir Clips. I kind of lost track of, but now that I work on vintage, you know, 50 year old cars on a routine basis now, instead of fresh dealership cars, it has taught me how valuable heat <laughs> and things are when doing this type of work, because sometimes it's the only way to get parts together and apart without destroying irreplaceable components. There. Look at that. I don't see any green sticking out, so we're going to assume that that's an <laughs> acceptable installation. <laughs> Shaft. Oh, almost. almost. <laughs> almost got it all the way in. Wait, wait. Does the chain have to go on first? No? Okay. Um, yeah, you're probably right. So it's really yep. tight. 
Good call, Dan. Sorry, just look at the tolerances. I'm like, there's no way. There it goes. How do you tell when it's fully seated? I can see the flange. There you go. If you look real carefully, you can see the dark flange from the gear hitting the uh, machine face of the bearing. So we got a good seat there now. Nice. A little lube. And a frozen bearing. <laughs> tight so smooth yeah see. <laughs> oh my god yeah now that we're done driving bearings i finally got a good muscle memory for it <laughs> so in two months when i put that one together i can start all over again we have the so two chains oh i didn't get that on it's a good looking question probably should have waited to put the creams through the miracle so. of Science and muscle. <laughs> so the way that, the way to assemble it in that fashion is I laid this chain under this chain and then fed the sprocket in through the top and gently worked the chains onto each set of teeth, wiggling it around, huh. gently getting it in through the uh, crank seal as well. There's just wow. enough play there. You could actually the wiggle seal. through. Yeah, if you're <laughs> gentle with it, it really nicely just pop straight through all right nice as evidence by the Ooh. fact that the lip on the front of the crank seal is not rolled outward nice <laughs> yeah that we already put in there and glued in yeah thankfully chains back on with the tensioner so that's what 20 something years or what 30 years 27 27 years will do to that it's pretty gnarly compared to the brand new one so this is the gasket that goes on the front of the motor is part number 150077 which actually looks kind of pretty so we got to do the same thing with the rtv on this one don't right. touch it don't touch it <laughs> don't touch it so why isn't it springing out the insert in here has a whole set of stepped right pieces okay. see that yep and there's is a pin it here. it no there's a pin here so there's a point of equilibrium here so if i were to just push it in it will want to release itself so it will stay in position right here and then as soon as we attach everything and the chain depresses it it's going to kick and try to run down the ratchet basically and self-tension itself so if you push it right now it'll okay it'll shoot apart right. time for some gasket action Where's the other end of the chain go on? The oil pump? Yeah. Isn't there a gear that needs to be put on? Yeah, he's got it up in there. Oh, it's in there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> well, we've just been having fun with chains, so thought I'd double check. <laughs> the other one that's irritating is getting the chains around the guides and tensioners. All right, so we're in the right-hand guide. We're on the tensioner pad. Oh, that's not on. And I know the tensioner pad is released because I actually had to uh, manipulate it. Thank you. So you're not going to have to turn the... Yeah. Chain in the bottom. All right, it looks like we're now up at the bearing. Good. Hear that? I like that sound. Yeah, when it goes from <coughs> hollow to solid. Yeah. Looking good, my man. Start bolting stuff. Congratulations, Timo. You just got your first major component reinstalled on your 348. Well, you did. 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, I just stood here and made fun of you and drank beer all day. I didn't do nothing. All right, had to put on the AC compressor two. back bracket. You know, it's a drill with a clutch. Is because if you talk. So 18 foot pounds. Hey, and the extra mind yeah. stay. I just gotta release the tensioner. Uh, uh, you're gonna rotate it anti clockwise. Okay. Yeah, go anti clockwise. Yeah, that ain't working. There we go. That sounded good. No. No? You son of a bitchin' whore. Round two. There we go. Bingo. Of course. The moment I'm not filming. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love it. Uh, such is life. Oh yeah, that's nice. Have you not learned working with me yet? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? He looks over to make sure. And then after you're done, you're gonna take a, a clean finger and you're gonna press it hard like this and you're gonna wipe the entire edge because when you compress it, right, it's gonna squish. So you wanna clean some away from the edge so when it rolls so inward, room. it's not trying to roll all the way inward. It's all about the schmear. The schmear. All right, Tim's going under for the old pan. I'm going down. Going down. Watch yourself. Uh, Mm. I can probably hold this a little. Yeah, that would be all the way up? No, mm. it's okay. not quite. Over this, this corner. corner. This corner. Yeah. There you go. There you That's go. That's good. Yep. Alright. All right. Um, I'll, give, I'll give you a washer after because it's going to be hard to um, all right. run the washer. You can take it back off and run a washer after you get a couple in there. We're going to run them all out anyway. There's a lot of nuts down there. Wrenching away. All right, that's where we're wrapping up for today. Got the front cover on, got the oil pan on. So tomorrow we're gonna kind of get the rest of the front of the stuff on, get it basically ready for the cam belts and timing and stuff, but probably won't actually get to the timing until the next time we work on it. But we'll continue on tomorrow morning.